Good afternoon. We are the Autonomic Cloud Computing Research Team. My name is Arpit Sheff. I'm Walker Davis. And I'm Davis Liu. Over the course of these past three weeks, our research team has worked on developing a web application called Comparacel. Here's what Comparacel does. It helps facilitate cancer research by enabling medical professionals to take an image of cells and compare it with a database of other cancer cells. However, because this image analyzing process is very resource intensive, we decided to move this application into the cloud environment. But before we get into all of that, we need to ask a more fundamental question. So, what is the cloud? At its essence, cloud computing is using third-party resources to manage your own computational needs. Realize it or not, many of you probably already use the cloud in applications such as Google Documents, Dropbox, or Apple's iCloud. And in all of these instances, information and data is being stored not on your own local hardware, but over the internet on their servers so that you can access the information whenever you need it. So in the traditional model, when you need resources such as software or hardware, you would have to go out and buy it for yourself. However, using the cloud model, you can instead rent services as you need them, so it's a much more elastic way to provide for your resources. One practical example of the efficiency of the cloud would be in something like web traffic resource management. Say you own an e-commerce store or an online web store. You'll often see a lot of user fluctuation. For example, during the winter months, you might see more users because people are buying gifts for the holiday season. In order to meet this fluctuation, you have to either overbuy or underbuy because you are only using a fixed amount of resources. If you overbuy, you're buying enough servers to meet the maximum user demand but then in most cases, when your user demand isn't at its peak, you're gonna be wasting all the servers you're running because they won't be going at full capacity. If you underbuy, it's less inefficient, but then during your peaks, you won't be able to meet all of the user demand and you'll end up with unsatisfied users. Cloud computing offers a solution to this sort of fluctuation. On the green, the green block you see on the bottom represents how much hardware you actually own. Thus, with your own hardware, you can meet the minimum user demand. However, the green dashed line shows what you're purchasing from the cloud. So when your user demand goes up, you can go to a cloud computing center and say, I need to borrow 10 of your computers for three hours because I have more users than usual. This way, you don't have to buy 10 completely new computers, but you can buy the resources you need as you need them. A key aspect of cloud computing is its elasticity. And cloud computing allows you to meet your resource needs on the fly by expanding and contraction as you need it. Thus, cloud computing saves money, energy, and resources because you're only using the services you need as you need them. So earlier, Arpit mentioned Comparacel, but what is Comparacel? Comparacel is an application that combines web technologies, image recognition algorithms, cloud computing, and a graphic interface to create a full user experience. The image recognition algorithm was designed by the Cancer Institute of New Jersey and works by comparing a user image to patches of a database image. At each of these patch comparisons, the two images are broken up into several segments, and the color values in each corresponding segment are compared to determine how similar the two images are. <coughs> this redundancy affords a lot of accuracy, but because hundreds of thousands of comparisons need to be made per image, and there are thousands of images in this database, this program can take weeks to run on an average computer, which is unacceptable when a diagnosis needs to be made quickly. So, the Cancer Institute sought Rutgers' help in adapting this, this program for use in the cloud. With the help of Rutgers' Center for Autonomic Computing, the application was adapted for use with Common Cloud, Rutgers' proprietary cloud platform. Common Cloud is a very adaptable framework and can be used to meet pretty much any user need. In the past, it's been used for protein modeling, oil reservoir simulations, and projecting stock market prices. <coughs> As you'll see here, this is the general framework of Comet Cloud. It's pretty similar from application to application, but we're going to discuss it in terms of the image recognition algorithm. All of the shapes you see around the oval, they're all separate machines connected through the cloud. And the top node up there, the master, is responsible for creating tasks for the other machines, the workers, to compute. In this case, the master may say, I need this user image compared with these five database images, and then it will take that task put it into the center shared space in the middle in the form of a file, and then an unoccupied worker will take that file, process it, and send the result back to the master. Once every task is done, the master will shut down all of the workers, output a result to the user, and close the application. So this dramatically improves the execution time of the application, but there's still one fatal flaw. 
both Common Cloud and the image recognition algorithm are written in command line Java, which for most people, and especially most doctors, is almost unusable. This really narrows the reach this application could have, and considering how useful it is, that would be a tragedy. So, this is where Comparacel comes in. Once again, Comparacel aims to combine the Common Cloud framework <coughs> with the content-based recognition algorithms, along with the graphical user interface. Our program is conceptually split into two distinct structures. First, we have the front end and the back end. The front end is responsible for handling all of the user interactions, um, primarily through the website. The back end is responsible for managing all of the program features that Walker just mentioned. So on the front end, the user first logs onto a website. Here, they are able to adjust a few parameters and upload their image. Once all this information has been submitted, it is sent through the PHP scripts running on the web server. PHP, in essence, is just one side of the bridge that connects the front end to the back end. So the PHP takes their input parameters and it sends it over to the back end, or the other side of the um, server, which is the agent. The agent takes the input parameters and it uses it to run the programs. First, it runs the Common Cloud framework to establish the cloud environment. Second, it runs the content-based image recognition algorithms within the cloud environment. Once all the computations are completed within the cloud, the cloud sends its results back to the agent. The agent that takes this information relays it back to the PHP front end, which outputs it to the HTML and CSS to be outputted on the GUI website. We've done a lot of jargon talking, but let's show you how this thing really works. We have Dr. First Name Davis and Dr. Last Name Davis, who are going to take you through this live demonstration. <laughs> so my esteemed fellow Davis is going to upload our query image. This is just a blood smear. He's going to select in the bottom left-hand corner what portion of the database to compare this to. This allows us to save time and money by getting rid of any images we don't need to look at. And then in the top right, it's going to select several parameters which affect how accurate the search is and how thorough it is. So if you want a more accurate result, it's going to take more time and more money. So it's a trade-off. Now he's going to hit compute, and we're going to get our results in a little bit. So just wait, wait a second. <laughs> and we're done. This outputs the most similar image in the database, and then you can download a more detailed text file that includes other images that are similar to it and how similar it is, the, all the images are to the query image. And now we're going to get back to this. <coughs> so now that you've seen how the program works, you're wondering, well, why is all this important? Cloud computing and web applications in general have a lot of benefits and advantages. We were able to run this computationally exhaustive program through an average machine such as my laptop. This is because all of the bulk of the computation was done remotely in the cloud environment. The content-based recognition algorithm, if we were to run it on our laptop, like an average computer, it would have taken 14 weeks to just analyze a single query image. That's very impractical. Another key aspect of Comparacel is its accessibility. Because we're using a web application, it can be accessed anywhere you have internet from any internet-capable browsing device, whether it be your desktop, laptop, or even from your smartphone. This allows doctors to more conveniently make accurate decisions and diagnoses for their patients. Combining cloud computing and web applications is a very complementary mix in the real world because it allows your programs to be cost efficient, scalable, and accessible. In the modern day, researchers have abundant access to huge amounts of data. However, as we see from Comparacel, by combining a user-friendly web application with the high-speed analysis of the cloud computing, we can make research and problem-solving more productive by allowing scientists to do their science while engineers optimize the process. We would like to thank several people for making this project a reality. Initially, we would like to thank our project mentor, Dr. Ivan Rodero. He guided us every step of the way, and unfortunately, he cannot be here for our presentation. We'd also like to thank our RTA Stoyan Lazarov for guiding us through this project. And we'd like to acknowledge the, co the contributions of the various GSET sponsors whose funding made this program possible. Special thanks goes out to Dean Eileen Rosen and Jean-Patrick Antoine, his, the directors, for making this program such a success by taking some of the most inspiring people and meeting them with some of the most best and inspired students. Additionally, we'd like to thank the Governor's School Board of Overseers for once again making GSET another successful program. And we are so honored to participate in this program. Once again, thank you for your attention. Does anyone have questions for us?